Hi, welcome to the part 5 of this video series. We are looking at AZ400 real exam questions. Please subscribe to my channel and like my video videos. If you have some constructive comments, please drop in your comments. Please remember this channel is totally dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications. For previous questions, please refer parts 1 to 4 of this video series. Let's look at question 19. A very small question. So you have a DevOps project, something like that. And you want to prevent the configuration changes over time. So now it suggests subscription health scan as a solution. So subscription health scan primarily if there are service incidents or planned maintenance. So only then you can use this. So for example, you have a VM and this VM has rel 8.2 installed and as a part of this planned maintenance this stuff as a part of planned maintenance your admin team has sent an alert for example next tuesday at night 10 to 2 am 10 pm to 2 am they will perform an upgrade to rel 8.3 rel is the operating system of this vm so this is one instance and suppose there is a cosmos db database which is a global database and in some regions this service is not available so if it is global that means in the us it will be available in us there are four regions it will be available there in london it will be available in india it will be available but somehow suppose in us it is available in some regions but in london it is not available in india it is not available then that is we will create a service incident and this service is used for that like if you want to know in one go uh, what are the different services which are not available what are the incidents there and when do we have a planned maintenance so you as a developer can then accordingly manage your work or you can tell the project manager to accordingly uh, fit this in the plan project plan so the answer here it will be no because this will not help you to prevent the configuration changes it will only help you with this now let's look at question number 20 so your source code is on github source code for what source code for app one now there is a bot this bot is there this bot is called dependa bot it tries to see if the dependencies for app one are met or not and if an update is required it will tell you so we want to apply the update out of these four what should we do first see the first thing is create a pull request you do it when you want to change or merge a code in github for example this is github and you think that you have a new version of the code for this app one some functionality of app one so you can merge this by creating a pull request see if you have already created a pull request then you want to send it to the stakeholders to review and approve it so in this case my understanding is when a dependa bot detects this bot is detecting that there requires an update then a pull request is already there you just have to approve the pull request by the stakeholders it should be approved so this is my answer see branching strategy we used to manage code in github maybe for version control or if multiple developers are working on the same version of code how you can manage that that you can do it through branches branch will not help you apply this update that this dependa bot is asking see usually what happens you have a local repo you are doing your coding in your local repository and then you have to tell which piece of your code you want to move to github commit to github just because your local repo is connected to github every change you are making will not go to github you will have to do a commit but commit is not the first step to apply the first step is you have to approve the pull request by the stakeholders see it's like uh, see, there is an app called my gate what it does is the security guy will have this app and you will have this app as a resident so the security guy will create a request that uh, suppose 
an Amazon delivery guy has come. It will create a request and say Amazon guy has come to deliver. Do you want to approve it? So that security guy is this depender bot. He has already created a request. This one, he has already created a pull request. So you do not need to create a pull request first. Now it goes to you as a resident, you have to approve it. So that is the first step, you have to approve it. Only then the Amazon guy can give you whatever, so he can commit. It's just like, like a commit, he can commit whatever he wants. So that's why D will be happening at the end and branching. Suppose this Amazon guy, to the migrate he has come to deliver the packages to five different apartments so that's a branch for him so how to do it he will create himself a branch strategy first i'll go to this apartment then i'll go to this apartment that is a branch strategy he will create so we will lock this answer and move forward so let's look at question 21 so let's look at this one it's the same question like question 19 but the solution says add code coverage steps so see the code coverage this is what is uh, the thumb rule suggests code coverage as the name suggests coverage so have you seen flipkart.com this is flipkart.com just like amazon.com you can buy and sell stuff here so it has various functionalities some functionalities are for creating an order some are for bucket management some are for payment management accepting the payments online payments so on so if there are a different code you know different piece of code for these three functionalities imagine only these three functionalities for now to so coverage means that all the code related to creating orders bucket management payment should be covered that should be the ideal goal 100 percent code coverage so what does the code coverage does is it helps you determine the portion of your project's code that is actually being tested by test as unit test so if you are doing unit testing we need to ensure that every piece of code is unit tested so this gives you a very good uh, visibility of what piece of code has been tested what has not been tested but code coverage will not help you to prevent the configuration of the project from changing over time it will not help you with that so the answer here is no let's look at question 22 now the question is same but the solution being used is continuous integration so suppose you want to move your code from dev to prod continuously that means if whenever you have suppose small piece of change you have done and you want to commit that uh, so you have continuous integration so that that piece of code you can move it to prod so if you see this definition whenever there is a code change done and you want to commit that you can share it in a version control repository after which the deployment will proceed so this will not help you with preventing the configuration of the project from changing over time eh? question number 23 so I have the same question but the solution is different instead of continuous integration the solution says to use continuous assurance so continuous assurance will help you with a uh, security state drift it will help you prevent that but what does security state drift mean so suppose you were uh, there is a security compliance requirement for example called SCD so this is for security and confidentiality so if you are compliant today and your suppose security process or auditors like PricewaterhouseCoopers they have audited your system and it is saying that you are compliant today it should not automatically change after one week it becomes non-compliant that check should always be done and this will also help you be current with the future implements of security suppose in the aes 256 encryption protocol there is some new feature added then it will help you stay current so this encryption is used for database encryption that is encryption at rest so and 
this is an important part of security as well so that nobody can hack your data and even if a hack happens nobody can read the data unauthorized access is not allowed so this is the answer so please subscribe to my channel this channel is dedicated to help you clear cloud certifications let's revisit some thumb rules we covered in this session This brings us to the end of part 5. See you in the next part.